Hello, and welcome to the Irish East Beat. Today, I want to begin telling you about the story of Tyrone House in County Galway. It's a rather tragic tale, and it ends badly, although that didn't necessarily have to be the case. Built in the 1770s, Tyrone House once stood at the centre of an estate running to at least 24,000 acres. Overlooking Galway Bay, it had been built for a man called Christopher French. The Frenchers were one of the 14 old Galway families collectively known as the Tribes. Now, in the later Middle Ages, these families, which also included such well-known names as Blake, Bodkin, Brown, Lynch and Morris, ran the city of Galway as a mercantile fiefdom, and they became extremely wealthy in the process, allowing many of them in due course to acquire estates in the countryside and become part of the ruling elite there. This was the case with Christopher French's forebears, and around the time he built Tyrone House, he also changed his surname to St George in order to accept a legacy from his deceased great-uncle. He rejoiced in the name of St George Usher St George until 1763, when he was raised to the peerage as Baron St George of Hatley St George. The legacy was duly remembered because in a niche inside the entrance hall of Tyrone House, stood a life-size white marble statue of Lord St George, benignly observing all the activities of the place. So what did the house look like in its heyday? Well, the Irish Georgian Society Records, Volume 5, which were published in 1913, provides the following description. Large square house of blue limestone and portico with two Doric columns. Venetian window in centre, alternate stone coins. Paved hall is decorated in plaster panels with classic medallions and festoons. In a niche is a life-size marble statue of Usher, Lord St. George. Spacious dining room has elaborate ceiling in low relief, with oval group in centre and frieze showing Adam influence. There's a sienna and white marble mantel, dimensions similar to the drawing room, which has a ceiling in low relief and elaborate overdoors. Pretty Adam ceiling in morning room, where there is a good mantel in two marbles, coved Adam ceiling office, poor staircase. We've an earlier brief description of the place from the 1780s when it was visited by an Anglican clergyman, the Reverend Daniel Beaufort, about whom I want to talk to you next week. He was then travelling around the country in order to produce a new map of Ireland. In his journal at the time, he noted, See Tyrone House, large and new but very bleak and too high, though some low woods about it. In 1808, Beaufort was back, this time accompanied by his wife Mary and his daughter Louisa. The latter made a drawing of the now lost gate lodge there. Mrs Beaufort also kept a journal in which she wrote of Tyrone, It is a high house standing on high ground, without a tree, bush or offices in sight. Nothing can be more uncompromising than it looks from this road. The old gentleman, Christopher St George, built the house, and an excellent one it is, finished in the best manner with painted ceilings in all the lower rooms and to the hall, which is large and handsome. He furnished it in the best style of those days, of about 20 years back, lived in it and enjoyed it, and nine or ten years ago resigned it to his son, who soon after married Lady Harriet St. Lawrence. And they have lived happily and have seldom left it, never for any length of time. Mr. St. George, an excellent country gentleman, improving his estates, fond of hunting, shooting, and all country sports. It all sounds rather idyllic, doesn't it? But very sadly, the scene as presented by Mrs Beaufort in her journal wasn't to last very long, as we'll see in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.